was very colorful. Almost eight and a half years ago, so no need to bring that up. Mm, yeah, we can't all be held accountable for our adolescent personas, can we? Magicolio. Mm -hmm. Magicolio, that was 15 years ago. Don't get me wrong, I love magic. Like you and many others who I suppose were not getting any sex in high school, I, um, I dabbled with it. But uh, unlike you, I was able to transition upward towards actual magic. Science, you may have heard it called. So, would you like to know, my friends, just how I got you here? Um, we know how you did it. No, you don't. Yeah, you stole our files for the show, then stop. obviously hypnotized us. No, seriously, the stop. The strobe was a combo of binaural beats as well as... No, I said stop! You might not be having fun, but I am. You have an unusual way of showing it. Welcome to Franchise Killer, a podcast where we pick movie franchises or wannabe franchises, review them film by film, and see where things went wrong. All right. I'm Daniel Radcliffe. Magic! <laughs> oh, I thought you were doing the girl. No. <laughs> we saw a movie today. Yeah, we saw this week. What movie yeah. was that? Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. That's what you watched. <laughs> not yeah. not only was it Harry Potter one, it was Daniel Radcliffe, Order of the Magicians, Phoenix. and you know he's standing up for this old guy. That's true. Yeah. You know you're you're right. Some uh, guy well, turned into a rat. You watched that, and I, I guess we all didn't miss the memo, and we watched. Now you see me too. Uh, 2016 release. Yeah, but let's be honest. Who's the real winner in this situation? I am. Whoever named no. this title, mm. <laughs> yeah. instead of. Now you don't. Yeah, I know. I Why didn't they call it that? Or now you see me, comma, two, T-O-O. -O. Or, or no how comma. about now you see me as well? How's that yeah, sound? Yeah, that too. I mean, you know, now you see me as well. Or that doesn't have as much of a... Now you see me? Question mark? Question mark, yeah. Now you see me? Maybe? <laughs> Did, you see me Did you see this movie? <laughs> I don't know, but I see you. <laughs> or just no title at all. You have to, you have to find it. Hey, did now you watch? I see you. Yeah, I love that movie. <laughs> Just pause. <laughs> so stupid. Anyway, I'm the host, Reese. To my left is... David. To my further left is... Irina. And right across from me... Harry. Noah. You can say, Harry say Noah. the Noah louder so people actually can hear your name. Noah. That was weirdly hey, seductive. I, I respect mm, how, how committed he was, though, in the pause. That was... Uh, yeah. Ten points for Gryffindor. Deliberate. And... Way off in a distant land, or is he? Is he doing some sort of slate of hand? Is he with us, or is he not? Oh. I don't know. But <laughs> it'll never tell. AJ, do you see him? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. He, he said he said the title of the movie and then said his name. Uh, as I mentioned, we're talking about now. You see me too. It's a 2016 release, directed by John M. Chu. There was a bit of a director shuffle with this one, moving off from Louis Leterrier in the last one. It's pretty evident. Yeah, John M. Chu also directed Step Up to the Streets. Step <laughs> can, Up can he 3D. Not do <laughs> uh, wait, Jim and the Holograms, uh, Justin Bieber, Never Say Never, and um, Crazy Rich Asians. Okay, I, all of those weird. except for that last one. I know. Uh, well, I haven't seen the Step Up films. Uh, they, they have a fan base. I'll I watched the first one a lot growing up. So you did see Justin Bieber? Yeah, I saw Justin Bieber. That's actually one of my favorites. <laughs> Uh, that part where he says baby really gets me. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> we'll sleep in there. Uh, the movie stars Jesse Eisenberg, Mark Ruffalo, Woody Harrelson, Lizzie Kaplan, Dave Franco, Daniel Radcliffe, Morgan Freeman, and Michael Caine. So there was uh, a little, another little swap. Isla Fisher is not in this movie. She's replaced by Lizzie Kaplan, who's playing a different character, and... Yeah, no more Isla Fisher. She was having a third baby. Mm. And we also get... Oh, so that's why. Yes. Okay. Uh, screenplay by Ed Solomon versus the last movie that was... There was like three writers or something behind it. I remember. I seem to remember a Boaz in there somewhere. Booze. <sighs> so, yeah. On this podcast, we first go over our thoughts on the film before revisiting it for the episode. Then we dive into the story, break it down bit by bit, and talk about the more significant moments. Towards the end of the podcast, we give our brief reviews and numbered scores, along with an analysis on the health of the franchise and whether or not this film hurt it. So, you guys, had y'all seen Now You See Me 2 before this episode? David? No. I, no. 
Now, That's did it. you even know it existed? I feel like maybe I did, but it really was in and out of my peripherals. So yeah. <laughs> That's one way of saying it. In and out of your peripherals? So I briefly saw it in the corner of my eye, and it just as I saw it, it, it was gone. It disappeared, <laughs> kind of like uh, shadow people. <laughs> yeah. <I>, okay. <laughs> uh, Irina. Uh, no. No? I don't, I don't even remember anything. Mm. Oh, no. sorry, I didn't, I, I didn't mean no. to cut you off. No, no, I yeah. I wasn't continuing. Nothing, Go ahead. Nothing more needed to be said than no. Uh, AJ. Yes, I had, uh, similar to how I saw the first movie, this was also on the streaming library, so I figured I might as well watch the second one. Yeah. Mm. Cool. I Man, I thought this was going to be like a clean sweep of no one seeing this movie at all. Yeah, usually but I'm the one that I, hasn't seen the movie. This so. may actually be my only other Daniel Radcliffe movie I've seen besides Harry Potter. Oh, wow. there's that one. Uh, I saw horns. Yeah, that's only horns. Other ones I that's what I was going to. That yeah. was a drastic. What about Ki- Kimbo or whatever? Akimbo? Akimbo. Guns Akimbo? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's also a Swiss Army man. He's in that. Yeah. So. so, like. He's had a lot of interesting the, choices. These, these movies um, that y'all are naming, I didn't really like them, but I strangely respect him for doing them. Yeah, he, you, you know, know, he tries to. He, he swings for the fences. He was in that, that. Uh, <laughs> He was pretty good in Woman in Black, too. Oh, yeah. My, man, my only issue is that is he looked too young for the role. Yeah. But I, that was, I did enjoy that. I think that that's movie. always his problem, though. Yeah. He's, he, he's just kind of a youngish looking guy. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I had also not seen this movie because I, I mean I wasn't a fan of the first one and felt no reason to return to the what I presumed were going to be the sloppy seconds. Uh, so, yeah. And boy, were you! I'm gonna totally not right. I'm gonna say I was pleasantly surprised. Actually, I, I, I thought it was gonna be a complete. Mm-hmm. And I was I was gonna mess. save that for the end, but you're you're right. I was also. More pleasantly surprised by this one than I was the first one. Yeah. I had a different... And that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's perfectly uh, fine. My my score is not much different from the first one, but it is... Yeah. yeah I was like, oh, this one's actually... Oh, yeah. yeah. There's something going on here. Yeah. Uh, are y'all ready to get into the story here? Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Let the momentum of the car do the work for you. It's all in the wrist. Not bad. Now you want to see a thing of beauty? Bingo, bango, bongo. That's good. It's good to be positive despite making zero progress in a year. Gotta raise a little hill. You thought that they had disappeared forever, but this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, the four horsemen. And the girl horsemen. Woo! Yeah! Nope. Are you listening, horsemen? You will get what's coming to you. Thank you, everybody! In ways you can't expect. Hey, it's great to be back. Now the greatest magicians in the world are my magic trick. Everyone get off the stage. We jumped off a rooftop in New York. Where the hell are we? Come here, come on. And we landed in China. How, how is this possible? This is simply my move. Next one is yours. Somebody got the better of us, okay? Somehow. Yes, you were lured into a trap. Ta-da! This is the key to every computer system on the planet. I want you to steal it for me. You think we're still gonna play a little game? I know you will. We're going out with the show. 18 months after outwitting the FBI, the fugitive four horsemen, J. Daniel Atlas, Merritt McKinney, Jack Wilder, and the new member, Lula May, await orders from the Eye, the secret society of magicians. The horsemen's handler, FBI Special Agent Dylan Rhodes, delivers their instructions. The horsemen are to expose corrupt tech CEO Owen Case whose latest cell phone will secretly collect users' personal data to sell on the black market. In New York City, the horsemen hijack the phone's launch, but are interrupted by a mysterious figure who reveals to the public that Jack faked his death, and that Dylan is working with the horsemen. Dylan eludes the FBI as the horsemen escape, only to find themselves in Macau. All right, and I just like totally blanked on this. Too though. A lot, a lot happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so we catch up with the four horsemen. It's eighteen months later, obviously, and they're awaiting their orders from the eye. The, our, the eye. 
Yeah, yeah. Other, otherwise known as Dylan, who is of the yeah. eye, the secret society of magicians. Also so you as, you yeah. kind of, from the beginning, get the impression that um, Atlas's character is kind of the outlier a little bit, mm. sort of um, trying to communicate outside of the group. Mm-hmm. So he's, you're... Yeah. He's also better when he's not doing this Playboy I, yeah, thing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And yeah. they sh- they shaved his head. You yeah, notice? I was like, yes, for him. it's gone. Was that, was, <laughs> it, was that for his Lex role, or it must have been? I mean, that's this? around the same time. I yeah. think 2016 actually was Batman v Superman. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking. Was it? Yeah. Gosh, I think it's crazy. It, in this one, it felt like they sort of, at least for his character, they just leaned into let's just stick with what you know how to do. You know, and yeah. it's um. It's his kind of typical role, but at least he's leaning into it more. And I, I actually like him Cocky as weasel this. boy. I think it's also helped because he's balanced out by the other members of the group. You know, there's sort of this uh, back and forth banter where mm. he's not necessarily top dog. There's a little bit of picking at him, you know, mm. so. Yeah. It's balanced, I think. I'll, I'll also say Lizzie Kaplan is an upgrade from Isla Fisher, I think. I agree, actually. Uh, completely. She's, it, it's actually a character uh, versus okay, Isla so Fisher. That's like, a, like, so, yeah, I I don't really like her. You don't like her quipping jokes? No, I don't. I That's exactly what I did not like. Okay. Um, oh. But I will say that she at least does have a character, so there is mm-hmm. that. Isla Fisher, or might as well not have been in the movie, in the yeah. last one. Yeah. But to me, while she didn't really have to be a character in the last movie, mm-hmm. that didn't necessi- like necessarily make it a negative. It just didn't add a positive. And mm-hmm. in this one, to me, the quips yeah. and such were a negative. I, th- I think I'm used to this actress, too, though. I And I've always liked her energy, so I... I didn't really have a problem with her being on this group. And um, I think the only issue I had from this was just how quickly she was added. Mm, Because apparently she's not really as renowned as the rest of them. But for some reason, oh yeah, I thought we needed a new member and this is it. Well, Dave Franco's character was kind of like that in the first one. Yeah, but he was selected he was from kind the of beginning. in a Well, in yeah, a but he wasn't way. like in the proving that. All, all, all I'm, everyone all went I'm through saying, trials too. Like all I'm saying is that here. she's like, oh yeah, we needed another um, person to fill the gap, and I found this one. So now all work together, and it's a kind of a seamless machine now. I, yeah. I don't know. That's all, but not really a huge deal. It's also, uh, I don't know if it's just John M. Chu's filming style, but this movie, like, it, it's gotten rid of some of the razzmatazz of the yeah. first one, where it was just super flashy at every every chance that it could be. This one's more more human. Yeah. I don't know, just... No, I know what you mean. It's a little... build. Maybe slightly more down to earth, up until the end, at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And oh. there's still all that cool, you know, there's cool magic tricks and all that there. But the the scale, even though this movie, you know, same budget, actually higher budget, mm-hmm. it feels like they, they pared it back a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So I also, agree. I think I, it's I think, the okay. less motion of the camera. Like, it settles a bit more to focus on the dialogue. Yeah. yeah. From the get-go of... Um, they show uh, Dylan doing his thing, and immediately that kind of took me out of it because he is not him. Yeah, I was thinking I the same thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. he like complete like, like even at the end of the first one, he there's like a little bit of that uh, you know wonderment to his character, like oh yeah, he's he's a, he's, he's, he's above a, everybody. Yeah, he's a little bit mysterious. He's like that. Kind of top yeah. guy. He just pulled off a huge thing, and then this one, he's like a goofy FBI agent yeah. going yeah. on a little chase. I think like he doesn't know what he's doing. Like yeah. I, I, I agree with that too. And the only argument I could say against that is that while that was his long con, I guess he didn't have anything else planned after that. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mm. think because he had so long to plan that out. He had the opportunity to come across as, oh, yeah, he's always thinking ahead. But now it's kind of... But I, I, I agree with you. I wish he didn't lose that aspect of mm. his character in the first one. I would like to continue seeing him as 
a little more um, intelligent than he's mm-hmm. portrayed here. Well, it, I I don't think he's used to ever be, he's never been exposed before. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think that plays into it as well. Like he that makes sense. You get instead of him being on the hunt, he's on the run for once with yeah. them. Even though no, I, I, I I'm not referring to that. I'm referring to him at like the very beginning yeah. whenever he's. Uh, talking with the uh, other FBI agents. He's at agents. the police department. Yeah. And, like, basically. he's, like, like yeah, the pigeons! And, like, yeah. I know that was him, like, trying to, like, make them not go with that. Exactly. But that's not his character to do that. He would be more serious in that role mm. based on the first one. I don't know, unless he's, like, it's just, uh, this is the character that I am. As yeah, I, I, it's what they write him to be, which is, that's what yeah, he is. Yeah. It's okay, I guess, but I agree that they should have went a different direction. Although yeah. that whole web conspiracy thing, yeah. I mean... Ugh. I think it's, yeah. it's this is uh, bringing up a weakness I found in the film from early on, is just the whole uh, police involvement in this film oh, yeah. feels very pointless. Yeah. Like, they're just kind there. of... They're just kind of following along with the movements of the film, but not actually really taking a huge part in the plot. And the characters from the department are kind of boring and generic in general, so I don't care to see them anyway. Yeah. So I, I don't really know why they're here other than to and slap the bad guys in cuffs, I guess. In fact, like, should have just had him leave the FBI after the first one and and he can just do stuff with the eye because like when you think about it he doesn't need to give yeah. them improper clues that they're at he large. probably learns a lot from being in that field it, it's probably you know? beneficial I, I I suppose he, but he could always like if, if the FBI were getting onto one of the people from the eye like they caught on to someone he could mm-hmm. be like no actually you know yeah. Well, look uh, at all the good that did him this movie. I know, uh, but that that I I believe the setup. Yeah, the, yeah. at the well, beginning there was of this also movie. a third party that interfered. It, it wasn't well, really the FBI. All right. getting clued in the same the way. point point is not what happens. The point is they the could execution. have written it in a way that it would have f- had a better flow and it would have made more sense yeah. if he hadn't. Yeah, you know, been I, there. Like you can, you can explain away all sorts of things by writing, but like you don't have to all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's jarring because um, in the first movie, he's basically pulling all the strings, like he's the mastermind behind everything, and now he's relegated to be the hand or the middleman between yeah. the eye above him and then the the horseman below him. So he's just kind of like repeating orders instead of controlling things behind the scenes himself. Yeah. It's because he ditched Laurent for Burberry, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what what do we think about Daniel Radcliffe here? I don't think we got to We that didn't point. get We're to him yet. yet. Yeah. So we we got to the point where we have... Um, They're L- shipped to Macau. Lula? Yeah, Lula. And oh, she's yeah. introduced to the, the group. Okay, yeah. Um, and then they have their first performance together, and it is uh, sabotaged by yeah, an and unknown they're, they're exposed. entity. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. I can probably move on to the next I, I do like the... Okay, there's one issue to this. They were already exposed, most of them. Mm-hmm. So really, the only thing that's truly at stake here is Dylan's identities revealed. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's that big of a deal that Jack's still alive. It's just like, oh, you're back in the spotlight again. Yeah. Like, like you were in the previous one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this one's just like, oh, Dylan is with them too. Yeah. Like I, I didn't think that reveal was as hugely no. shocking as it yeah. could have been. Well, like, also, the as a detective, you're watching this magic show, even if you suspect someone you're working with to be a mole, mm-hmm. you hear... An unknown entity that has, you know, s- sabotaged this whole platform kind of uh, sinisterly and just yeah. saying, like, oh, and the fifth one is Dylan, you know, whatever. <laughs> and, and then like, you immediately that, cuff the guy. You're all like, yeah, this is my big problem right now. Like, what? <laughs> Dude, what? <laughs> what kind of incompetent FBI agents, though? You know, like, why would they immediately believe like some mysterious voice that yeah, oh it's Dylan that that's other my guy point. was like yeah. I knew this it. actually this actually goes back to a point you made on the previous episode Noah about how it'd be more interesting if they had masks mm-hmm. yeah this, if they had masks and their identities were not revealed throughout the entire first film and then all of them are revealed at the beginning that would have been this s- movie, been a lot that would have been pretty cool yeah mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I, think I mean, it's... to be fair, I, I was thinking about that, and the one drawback is that, like, the magicians have to have their, like, showmanship. But, like, yeah. if they could do that, like, without having to, like, still make a show without having to show their faces, yeah, it would have been great. Yeah. Oh, uh, I think, I mean, Jack being alive, being a twist, and exposing Dylan, I think it's because the horsemen are, you know, in this position of being uh, a public service almost, or white hat hacktivist, mm-hmm. you know in favor of yeah. the little guy, and then suddenly they're exposed as being um, less than truthful, disingenuous, and right. that kind of thing, and adding that uncertainty to, to, to kind of vind- uh, vilify them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, even if if uh, Wilder's still alive, like, the, the thing is they're lying to the public instead of, you know, him actually being alive is, is the issue, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Uh, anyway, let, let's move on with that story. All right. They are captured by Chase, Merritt's twin brother, and brought to Walter Mabry, Owen's former business partner. Having exposed the horsemen in New York, Walter reveals how they were lulled unconscious and flown to Macau. He explains that Owen took his company from him, as well as a chip designed by Walter to access any computer system in the world. Despite the protests of the other horsemen, Daniel agrees to steal the chip for Walter before Owen can sell it. They acquire supplies from a magic store owned by Lee and Boo Boo and arrange to deliver the chip to the eye. Knowing they cannot trust Walter, posing as potential buyers, they infiltrate the Macau Science Center using cardistry and sleight of hand to sneak past its supervisor, Alan Scott Frank. I think throughout this entire section, this is when the movie was it started cooking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like the I, most interesting. I was here. enjoying just a lot of the banter, the setups. Mm-hmm. I was actually pleasantly surprised by Daniel Radcliffe in this role. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. like yeah. he. What What's impressive about him to me is that playing such an iconic character in the form of Harry Potter. I for once did not see Harry Potter. Yeah, like I was like, I agree. Oh, yeah. this is like a twerpy son of a. Yeah. rich guy who's yeah. you know uh, like I, th- I thought he was good like okay yeah. and and then i also realized what i was missing from the first one when he showed up is like oh a villain that i can actually like identify really identify mm-hmm. and can go toe-to-toe with them versus the the michael kane character who's kind of just uh Blue. i don't know just yeah he's... see you you don't really know where to aim in the first one michael yeah. kane yeah. thaddeus is he bad is he not wait yeah i mean we had he dylan no, who we not. thought was like on their tracks for the whole time but i i for some reason, I was just never. It, mm. It's it was that cat and mouse. I never thought for once that he would actually. Right. Uh, but yeah, Daniel Radcliffe. I think he adds a mm. an element to this movie that's yeah. appropriate, and, and he's also constantly kind of not constantly, but he's calling back to that, making little references to his tenure as yeah. Harry Potter. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, the way he says magic one time was like magic. oh, <laughs> <laughs> like he has that like in it instilled in his head of how yeah. to say it that exactly. It's like every right. time he says the word magic, it's like a flashback and I see you guys are doing some magic, magic. tricks. Yeah. Uh, I love I'll, magic. You know, look looking at him, you have to think, oh, you know, maybe uh uh just based on appearance they were already th- thinking of making him look as much different from Harry Potter as you can because mm-hmm. he no glasses, obviously, but then he's got this big old beard, this fancy Suit. clothing, and all that, and he has this like pompous, um, yet kind of eccentric. Yeah, he's usually an underdogish type character. of character. Yeah. yeah, and this time he's just actually it's connected. If you guys look behind the scenes, after he leaves Hogwarts and saves the world, he, he gets becomes a... insane. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, he's actually imagine if this a is a connected this. universe. Actually, that this is his son, happen. Albus Severus Potter. Oh, oh my god, gosh. that's why he went insane. Yeah. I mean, he is rich, uh... but I do like his little quirkiness. Like you said, like he makes that little like PowerPoint slideshow of the you know. The photos of everybody knocked out, and it's like he yes. uses like comic yeah. stands and just so cringy. Yes. On the flip side, speaking of cringe, I hated Chase, this character in this. Like this, Chase brings down this movie significantly in my eyes. I, I, I just oh can't weird because I I had a different feeling on Chase. Weirdly. I didn't like him. I I liked him. I, I I thought it was a smart choice to give your star player. Woody Harrelson more to do, so yep. they gave him the second role. I can get behind I that, like but that I don't like I, the role that they chose or wrote for him. Yeah, yeah, I agree. For for that guy, I felt like 
I, at first I was like, oh, haha, this is kind of funny. But then it was sort of pushed a little too hard. And yeah. I got a little tired of his whole like were bear and like I was oh, blending I in Zoolander my tum-tum, or something. And I was just like, oh my well, gosh. I yeah. thought that was the intention of the direction though, to you want to punch this guy in the yeah. face. It's, like, are, are, it's but, not so much that I want to punch him. I'm just kind of like tired of seeing him, you know? I I just it makes sense, but I, I don't know. I think Woody uh, one Woody Harrelson is enough for a movie. I he he has yeah. he has just the right amount of flavor. I don't think I need more of him. You know, that's that's that. just how I feel about it. <laughs> yeah, I well, I agree with. I'll be alone. I'll be with Reese over here. I I really liked it. Alone. I liked his with cor- Reese. <laughs> <laughs> hey Reese, you want to be alone with me over Am here? Am I anybody to you, David? <laughs> you're you're my best friend. <laughs> I I really like Chase's character. I thought he was quirky and provided more dynamic. Um, you know, like, I, like it was they, fun. They were having fun with this movie more than they were the first one. The first yeah. one I will was agree kind of, with that. The first yeah. one was kind of latching on to you know it. They'd crack a joke every now and then, but it mm-hmm. was I would say it was trying to it was taking itself somewhat seriously. Yeah, you know. Mm. And this one's just like it it lets loose a little bit. Yeah. It's it's still taking it seriously enough t- to the point where there are stakes to the I, story. I, I will agree opinion. with you there because there are definitely moments in this where it kind of uh pokes fun at itself. Like yeah. in the words of our villain here, he even says like, "Oh, I remember like when we were all sexless teenagers interested in magic." Yeah. And I was just like, and, "Oh, okay." Yeah, and, they're and also, self-aware in some way. I think like they got that quirkiness and lightheartedness with Lula enough. Like they didn't need to add an over the top yeah. Zoolander esque yeah. character in Chase. Yeah. Yeah. I, I honestly like this is something the first movie would not have ever dared to do mm-hmm. is to make the horseman not look cool for a second. Yeah. Like the f- first movie's trying so hard to, you know, oh, the horsemen are so awesome. Yeah. And this movie, as you already pointed out, AJ, there's the scene where they're, you know, induced. Or they're they're knocked out and they're all in all the embarrassing photos and then there's a scene at the end where they're just tossed out a plane in a kind of hilarious way even though they're they're in on that one yeah uh, it was just like yeah I like seeing the kind of you know goofier side of this mm-hmm. yeah so. the um, scene that stands out most in my mind is when they're stealing the chip from the science center I mean that's what brings this mm-hmm. movie into the heist genre for me yeah um, even over the yes. se- the first one like. You know, they trick someone else to fake steal money, but we only saw like after the fact how they did it. They broke into the, the you know, mm-hmm. the money or the vault or whatever. Now we're actually watching them act as a team to you know pass this card around. It was very entertaining. Get through the metal detector. Yeah. Like everyone had a part. So and yes. right before that, we had our montage of them trying to learn how to do it, which is kind of nice too. Yeah, yeah. And I when I see that scene in my head of them trying to steal the chip my brain starts playing Mission Impossible music. Like, oh, just, yeah. without even trying, it's like, dun, 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 yeah. dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun. I, I thought it went on for maybe a minute too long. I agree. Yeah. It yeah. was just a little excessive. Yeah. It's like, oh, you catch that, you catch it, you catch it. I th- I put it in my pocket, I put it, you put it in your pocket. So I was thinking, <laughs> I, I agree. I was thinking whenever I saw them doing all the things, like, wait, like, why are y'all tossing it around still? You just got it free from and they stopped right. patting you down. Why'd you, Why? Yeah. <laughs> like, why'd you toss it to the person that's about to get patted down? It ends up being fake anyway. Yeah. No. It's... Or or not. Or not. Well, it was kind of well, a no. It is MacGuffin or Deus Ex Machina, like this magical chip that's yeah. like super thin and can hack into anything. It's just one of those things that goes a little bit too far above the, you know, realm of credibility. Like I know everything here yeah. is, is kind of cheesy, but yeah, that was a little bit too much for me. I like yeah. that they only had one of these special chips. Like, don't you think they would, you know, have some kind of fail safe? As well as a number a of prototypes. But yeah, I I do think the whole passing the card around went on a bit long. I think at first I, I was like, oh yeah, this is pretty cool. I kind of like this. I mm. like them working as a team. And this movie is delivering what I was wanting from the first film which i think made it a little more enjoyable for me Mm -hmm. and that was just getting to see these actors actually interact with each other Mm -hmm. you know yeah i i think in the first one you just kind of you miss out on that any of the bonding experiences because they're already 
the horsemen and you're just watching their antics unfold after yeah. the fact. And this one, you're watching them work a yeah. lot more. Yeah, and, okay. and I really enjoy that. What I thought was uh, more clever than the um, tossing the card to each other, I thought the moment right after when they have to get it through the actual uh, metal, metal detector, detector yeah. that, was, that was smart. That was, I liked that because that actually required them to mm-hmm. use some thought rather than like, wait, it's here, now it's here. Yeah. Toss to you, you're put it in your bra. You're playing cardistry everywhere. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean... David's a cardist now, Noah. <laughs> I learned. I learned how they palmed it. You need to, David. You need to yeah. shuffle cards oh, in front of the way, when, that one. Them. That one would have worked. They're being searched down. Like, f- f- don't you think someone would have seen? Like, hey, that. Well, card someone kind of fl- did. Yeah, but they're like, nope, they're clear. They're after magicians. In their pockets. So I did learn that they they did learn how to palm cards and how to turn it behind their hand, how to yeah. throw it properly. So a lot of the times when you see them doing those things. They're actually doing them, mm-hmm. but then they use CGI to carry it through to yeah. other parts. But I was impressed by the fact that they were able to slide of hand I like the card. That too. I think they'd have to. I think that the only reason they had to do CG for that, like I would, I was thinking I would have appreciated it more if they had just done like specific shots and shown them just like flicking it. But then I thought, oh wait, but you have to have it be caught by the other yeah. person, and that's yeah. pretty much impossible. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's uh, move on. Cool, let's do it. Next portion. Dylan is contacted by Thaddeus Bradley, the magic debunker, who was framed for the horseman's crimes. Thaddeus offers his help in finding the horseman, and Dylan extradites him from prison. They go to Macau, and Dylan finds Daniel waiting to give the chip to the eye. Walter arrives, having manipulated Daniel into believing he was in contact with the Eye, and Dylan fights Walter's men as Daniel escapes with the chip. Captured, Dylan discovers Walter is the son of Arthur Tressler, whose fortune Dylan and the horsemen stole. Walter and Arthur lock Dylan in a safe and drop him underwater, mirroring the death of Dylan's father. Arthur pays Thaddeus for bringing him Dylan, and Thaddeus promises to deliver the horseman as well. Dylan escapes from the safe and is rescued by the horseman, realizing the chip they have is a fake. They resolve to stop Walter from requiring the real chip and are joined by Lee and Boo Boo. Hey, Boo Boo. <laughs> hey, Boo Boo. So this uh, uh, Thaddeus and Dylan team up. I actually find I... I kind of like the pair of them, but mm-hmm. I don't understand why they would have a scene with Thaddeus um, expressing how he wants to basically crush the four horsemen. And then he weirdly transitions in, into being a little more likable and helpful. I'm- and at the end, it's like it's really shoehorned in where it's yeah. almost like they're he's tearing up almost. Yeah. <laughs> but- yeah, and I I like I like seeing them work together. I think it's nice to since Dylan is separated from the rest of the group, he he needs some other character to uh, work, work off of. So you just bring the girl back in. Come on, <laughs> you just like... want Isla Fisher? No, 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 not Isla Fisher. Oh, <laughs> oh, you're talking about the um, French girl, yeah, Alma. Melanie. Yeah, Alma. Gosh, I always forget her name, but yeah, her. She, she, she was good. I liked her in the Maybe first she time. wasn't available. I don't know. Maybe. I'm That's sure she weird. wasn't. They because built up they her didn't... relationship with yeah. him. They made no mention yep. at all. Who knows? Uh, so what do we think about the whole Macau sequence, I guess, where Dylan finds uh, Daniel waiting to you know, give the chip to the eye? Well. Where we, he thinks it's a, a deception of sorts. I mean, I think it fits... Uh their characters i guess i i'm okay with this kind of development of the story um yeah there's more tension in this safe scene when he's underwater yeah mm-hmm. than in any of these two movies combined mm-hmm. like that was right. the most tension i felt even though i knew he was gonna get out that was the most tension yeah. i felt for a character in yeah all of this it was very aladdin-esque although I, i'd say uh dave with the the car crash in the first movie was up there as well oh, yeah. yeah but they didn't but, milk it really it was like you kind of knew he was fine they like you know, yeah, he's watching. Yeah. Like, he says, oh, "This is a magic it. movie." Yeah, but I don't know. I I feel like Daniel maybe he just doesn't seem like he's doing his homework as much in this movie. No, yeah. or he, he's he's less careful. He's caught 
in a bunch of mistakes more. Maybe that was mm. the intention of the writing to kind of humanize him more, so mm-hmm. he's not this perfect well, machine. Yeah. But well, I I think uh, like from the beginning they just made him look kind of not great. Like with that first encounter with the girl, I know he's like maybe not the biggest genius in the world, but like you know he should have been able to do something about her. You know. Yeah. Uh, Lula, that's her name. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really bad at the, all their names. <laughs> yeah, you names know? are I think, hard. And um, I kind of get the theme that's going on here. It's that whole blind spots mm. issue, and uh, his was his ego, and so he ends up forsaking some intelligence be- for the sake of his ego, and that makes sense. I I think I have no problem with that. So I don't yeah. mind that he's a bit of a dumb character in this sequence because he's while he is smart he does kind of overlook things because um his pride is being stroked or I something get that. yeah so i'm i'm fine with that i can agree with that also I, is anyone else just bothered by the fact that um dang it thaddeus there we go <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of names he just it, there are so many like weird little twists in his character that are like, wait, okay, mm-hmm. so now there's that. Yeah, and, the, my like, my one thing with Thaddeus is I really did get the impression that Dylan would have died and Thaddeus didn't care. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like he would, I, I, he was gonna let him die. Was he not? He was a fool. No. I mean, I know that he's still, you know, he's in disguise and he's, yeah. he's not actually the bad guy, but he was literally gonna let Dylan die. Yeah, in that and, but then he like. Yeah, he, he like shows up at the end as like, oh, oh this heartfelt way, guy who really cares about. I'm a yeah. good guy. I, it's I, like, yeah. it's like he goes from the the first movie. He's like, I'm the, a good guy. Now I'm a bad guy. Now I'm a good guy. The thing that confused me about that, and I I'm totally agreeing with you guys, is that he. So when when they have their conversation, I I do like this uh, kind of little bit of heart to heart where Dylan's uh, kind of going through this uh, traumatic experience about his dad and blaming Thaddeus for it or something. But um, the whole time they're at that uh, magic shop, they kind of find memorabilia, I guess, and they find the a prototype for the safe that his mm. father was in. Not once do they talk about... Well, they do talk about kind of how you would break out of it but not the specific way that that one was supposed to be yeah. broken so it was Thaddeus kind of implied leaves. i missed that though no it's, mm. it's not it's not really though it not clearly enough thaddeus leaves and it, he had also expressed later that he he didn't know exactly what happened to the father like mm-hmm. something went wrong but for some reason he felt safe enough to let dylan be in one of those safes and yeah, that's just weird. assume that he like would get out. It's left open, like almost like there's supposed to be a third movie where his dad is still alive or something like that. Yeah, I it it's it's really confusing because I I feel like you would have to really look into the background of this plot to figure out what it's trying to say all the time because that whole father still alive issue is up in the air for me Uh, like they don't talk about um i don't know dragging the waters or trying to figure out where the body is that not once is that mentioned or if he's just a missing person i don't know so i'm lots of questions (laughs) why did he die like they don't they don't talk about it well they don't even say that they did in the first one they said that like the the safe was like faulty and he got stuck in it. And they said his body was never recovered. But then they later did allude yeah, to the fact that... Yeah, his body was never recovered. Yeah, not only was his body never recovered, but Thaddeus even said, he always found a way. There he, was something on, always up, something his up his sleeve. Yeah, he's <laughs> all, like, hinted at it. Yeah, yeah if, there's so, a, if there's a third movie, that, that dude's showing up. He's yeah. The wizard behind like the head of the... It has to be. He's yeah. going to be the head of the eye at this oh, point. Oh, gosh, you're yeah. right. He will be. Yeah. Hey, I've just been testing you, my son. Because we never saw the head of the eye, exactly. did we? <laughs> this like, we just saw the time. middle man, and he happens to have employed who would possibly be his son. Your so. whole life was merely so, a test. I'll, you I'll are add, the true magician. 
I'll ask a similar <laughs> question that I asked to the first movie. In the first one, I asked if y'all believed that Dylan was actually an FBI agent yeah. before he revealed who he was. Did y'all believe that Thaddeus had turned bad or was bad? Or no. did you think like, oh, he's just going to turn back again? I, I didn't think he was bad. I was, was the whole like, time I was just thinking, oh, he's, he's going to be fine. I believed it until this moment when yeah. he basically let Dylan die. I mean, Dylan didn't yeah. die, but he was going to skipping just, ahead. He was going to let it happen. Huh? No, we're, we're still at that part at the safe. Yeah. Oh, that's gosh. Never I just mind. feel like yeah, he was you, you read a lot. Yeah. Like, not necessarily yeah. bad or good, but just, like, you know, out for himself to get away. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I, I think thought, the... Sorry. The no, the scene that convinced me that he wasn't bad was the... Like I said, when they were talking inside the magic store. Because that just gave me this almost assurance that they had common ground. Even mm-hmm. when he disappeared, I, I just felt like, oh... They relate on some level. I don't think he's actually a really yeah. evil guy. I was almost convinced. I, I I thought it was like, oh, that's a that's a bold move. Did, or, I thought the movie did a good job of okay. pushing my doubt yeah. just enough. Yeah. Mm. But who knows? I don't know. I, I think I'm. I was still struck by the uh, twist at the end of the first one to the point where I'm like, oh, no one's what they seem kind of a thing. And I just assumed he was good. Yeah. So. All right, do you want to move on with that plot there, Noah? Sure thing. This is actually the last one. All it's right. a big old... Big old, big old. Big yeah. old chapter. So, strap in. The Horseman announced a new performance in London with an implicit threat to expose Walter, who flies to London with Arthur and Chase in a private jet. On New Year's Eve... The horsemen perform across the city, but they and Dylan are captured by Walter's men and brought to the jet. Once in the air, they are forced to hand over the fake chip, which Walter confirms is actually the real chip. Dylan and the horsemen are thrown out of the plane, which is revealed to be a set floating on the Thames. They explain how they had misled the three into thinking they had won and revealed Jack had hypnotized Chase into throwing them out of the plane as planned. Walter, Arthur, and Chase's misdeeds are broadcast to the crowd and around the world, and they are taken into FBI custody as Dylan and the horsemen escape before the FBI can apprehend them. They arrive at the Greenwich Observatory, where they meet other members of the Eye, including Lee, Boo Boo, and Alan. Boo Boo. Their leader is revealed to be Thaddeus, who explains to Dylan that he was actually his father's partner in magic and was pretending to be his rival the whole time. (laughs) He appoints Dylan, the new leader, and the horsemen are shown a secret entrance to see more of the Eye. Uh, So... I actually, the finale, the final act, this uh, heist or whatever it is, the not even heist, just the, I like how they duped them in the plane. I thought that was, uh, one of the f- scenes that actually made me laugh was the way that they were just kind of casually tossing them out of the, out of the plane. And, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Michael Caine is, or, or Tressler is like. Uh, it's getting cold. Here, hurry up! Uh, I just, I, I liked, I liked just their goofy smiles. Kind of cavalier. Something yeah. about them was just, uh, yeah. But then, so smug. Am I wrong that the ending of this is almost exactly the same as the first one, where it's like, oh, we're gonna let you in on more of what the eye is about. Mm. Like that's the last scene. It's like, oh, I, I didn't actually. That was promised at the end of the first film, and I really don't know what the eye is about at all. No, I don't And now at the end of this one's like, oh, yeah, we're going to let you know what the eye is really about. Yeah. And yeah. Watch like, them do a third movie, and they're just leading them on another chase. Like, congratulations, you made it to the second level of the eye. And how is, yeah. like, wait, mm. what? How is Walter so ingrained in the eye organization structure that he was, you know, manipulating Atlas? I, yep, I don't know. There are <laughs> so just, many more questions yeah. that you have from this, and it's and it's the sad thing is you know it's not because the director or the people creating this wanted to create questions it was more just i feel like the loose ends just weren't tied up in a way that makes me feel like they know exactly what they're doing you know 
Like, they have a general idea, but because of those actions taken to get there, you're left with far more questions than you had at the beginning. So yeah. This movie. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the finale of this one's more, I think it's more fun than the first it one. Is. Yeah, it is. Like the race scene so and too. Jack's trick. Like, you kind of see yeah. the components yeah. of the overall trick. Um, yeah. yeah. I'll say that they, like, throughout the movie, they had kind of lost a little bit of the magic that they had in the first one, but then they kind of picked it back up at the end. Like, I uh, enjoyed whenever uh, uh, Jesse Eisenberg had his... Daniel. Daniel Atlas had his uh, his moment with the reverse rain. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. And then he disappears into the ground. Mm-hmm. And which, just his clothes remain, which mm-hmm. means he's naked somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, which, well, you know, Only in real life that coat. was CG. But it was like, oh, yeah, this is cool. They're kind of putting on a, yeah. a show. Like, this is fun. And then he they kind of mess with that rain later with the plane mm-hmm. flying. I thought that was a really yeah. cool way to do that scene. Oh, mm-hmm. speaking of which, the rain scene... Where they show it and it stops and they can move mm-hmm. it up and down. That's an yeah. actual practical thing. And David Copperfield said that you could actually replicate that in a theater or in an actual studio. Like if you're trying to do it yeah. for an audience. So it, it's really cool. That I, is a trick I've seen I would, before. I would yeah. love to see that explained. Like I want to know how, actually know how it is done. done. Okay, well give us the quick quick crash course on uh, how that's quick done. Quick crash course. You have water that's constantly streaming down. It's lights above and below. That are, are, that are pulsing at a frequency that make it look, when it hits the water droplets, like they're stopping and slowing down mm-hmm. or moving a specific direction. Based I mean, it's on not a light. time turner? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, he could be. He could be a real magician. Other than that, though, this uh, this movie has like more holes in it than the first one does. I would agree, but I had a lot better, uh, uh, a lot more fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. I- and maybe ah. that's because it felt more like a heist. Than and the also first one. more like they weren't taking themselves as seriously as yeah, the first one. I yeah. think they were having a little more fun with it. They were having some fun. And I felt maybe like they I'm were out of it. I, I felt like they were actually in danger too in yeah, this one. Yeah, okay. I'll agree with that, but maybe I don't know if they're like in my opinion at least it didn't seem too much like they were taking themselves a lot less seriously than they were in the first one. I felt like the first one wasn't too serious either. Yeah. I, th- I thought the first one was more serious than this one. Uh, agree to disagree. Okay. <laughs> That's um, How did y'all feel about the reveal but, of Tressler as kind of behind the villain? Like still alive, still involved with the vendetta. It made uh, sense. I think that was yeah. logical. I think I, at that point I was like, oh, yeah, makes sense. Okay. It's still it makes about sense. It just didn't have money, impact to me. but... Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> I was, exactly that. I was going to say it makes sense, but it's really boring. Yeah. The man with the money has I think the power. To yeah. to me, these villains other I I kinda like Daniel Radcliffe's Cliff's wow, Cliff's <laughs> uh quirkiness in this, but it still just kinda felt a little flat, just oh yeah, we're villains. You took my money and now I'm gonna throw you out of a plane. Yeah, but especially since he was I, like I just, collaborating with Thaddeus yeah. in the first movie. It's like that's the thing yeah. that I have a problem with is like there's so many internal cons- inconsistencies. Like we talked yeah. about, you know, as Dylan in his role as an FBI agent being too into it to actually like it would conflict with yeah. his ulterior motive. Uh, same yeah. thing here. It's like Thaddeus has these um, motives of, you know, being in charge of the eye and all this being the end goal. But, you know, the 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 path to the that end goal is like you're defeating the purpose of what you're trying to achieve. Yes, exactly. Yeah. There, I don't know. There's just a lot of character inconsistencies in both of these movies that yeah. it just it, <sighs> maybe maybe if these uh villains were more directly tied with uh something more criminal that they mm. had come across like drug trades or being in charge of like some kind of big crime scheme Black that market. would yeah. make more or a sense rival, you know secret society to the eye like yeah ex- been, yeah exactly you know, something in like conflict that. with them forever like a bigger otherwise they're scheme. just kind of random rich people that just decided they like to kill people sometimes or all the time i don't know it um, it just it doesn't really add up yeah it, it's still a very slight movie yeah but sleight of hand <laughs> uh, i'll say i'm getting more of those the feelings of what aj and david were talking about in the last review of one the first of movie us. Mm-hmm. no we're, we're i get it more for this one though where yeah. it's just like you know, it's putting on a flashy show. I'm yeah. not thinking about it a lot. Yeah. Uh, 
this is I'm having a good time. Yeah, that's like, weird because I I honestly took it the other way. But the thing is, my problem with the first one was they didn't develop character at all, and yeah. this one alleviates that slightly. You know, yeah, and I and I agreed with that. That's what, like one of the things I was debating in my head about the first one was whether it was better for them to have not really developed the characters or not. Like I said before, it's a double edged sword. You preserve kind of the tricks that they're doing and mm-hmm. like you don't really know any of them keep in mind that's kind of why we didn't get much to do for isla fisher's character because the focus wasn't really on, like it was on them but it wasn't directly yeah. on their character development yeah and with this one like, like it was like from that one it was an observer's point of view and with this one it was from their point of view and i don't know that kind of it, it's weird because it kind of takes away a little bit of the magic. For me, it adds stakes. Like, being in their point of view, I'm like, oh, now now I can see what they can see. Mm-hmm. And that leaves them more more open to a surprise. Yeah. yeah. I would have preferred if it was like a, like a rival organization to the eye being the mm-hmm. thing. And that's why they like came in on that virtual thing to crash their uh, yeah. kind of re- they're coming grand, out. They're grand reopening. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I thought I think that would have been a more interesting way to yeah. do things and have them be like an alternative evil cabal that yeah, kind of is messing with the. No, uh, that, that's what yeah, they still need to do for the third film. They're gonna have like the dark version of the Four Horsemen, where it's like or the evil twins, or yeah. the third one. <laughs> yeah. They will have to deal with actual magic. Actual magic. Dude, well, That'd be okay. cool. Real so here's magic. the thing. I would. That would be great. That would yeah. be a twist. <laughs> yeah. The four that horsemen would be versus cool. the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, they teased that the eye has access to actual magic. So mm-hmm. that's a thing in this mm-hmm. franchise. Yeah. They just haven't ever shown it. Yeah. Oh. Or they supposedly have actual magic. Yeah. Dumbledore shows up. <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy? All right. Oh, what so a that, weird crossover. That concludes our story portion of the podcast. We're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we're going to talk about this franchise as a whole and also give our brief reviews with numbered scores, talk about what critics thought and the uh, box office results of this film and whether yeah, or not maybe. it has a future. So we'll see you all then. Welcome back. We're here to talk about Now You See Me 2. Dos. Dos. David, you've got our scores there in a little bucket. I do. Why don't you draw them at okay. random? Noah, 3.5. Okay, so it's hard to explain because there's so many things. There's just so much wrong with it. Well, there <laughs> is. Yeah. is don't there do that more, voice Is there any true. more that much wrong than the last one? Yes. Well, let's let's hear them out. So the first one, like there there are inconsistencies in character, like one character, but like and and there are a couple of holes. But in this one, there are just so many different characters doing different things. Like Thaddeus changing his side about five times, and uh, I believe it was twice. But we'll no, well, you include the first one as well. Okay, and it it all amounts to that. But uh, you also have just like, oh, the same, vil- same boring villains back again. No, uh, I disagree. The ones... Okay, I'm going to let you review it. Go ahead, sorry. I'm not going to try and interrupt. All right. I'm, ta- I'm talking about... Uh, Michael Caine. Michael Caine. Yeah. And like, while I don't hate that he's there again, it's just, it's just kind of boring. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. To me, this movie just... Uh, like the first one, it still is a superficial movie. But... To me, it had less of that magic feeling I got from the first one. And that's why it goes down a point because it was a little it was less entertaining. It had more kind of cringe moments. And oh, I was cringing I was cringing so much harder in the first movie. <laughs> there well, was there was cringe to be had in both, let's be honest. Well, yeah. 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 Anyway, There's continue. cringe in both, but 
point remains. I I just don't like the it's inconsistency yeah, yeah, in yeah. characters. I I just had to. It, it wasn't your thing. Yeah. I, I don't think you're much of a magic movie kind of person. I'm not. You're well, more I like mean, a magic I, I mic can, kind well, of guy. Yeah, you. you you get me. I get you. <laughs> no, like here's the thing. I would love a magic movie done right. What kind of what kind of sleight of hand magician movie is Prestige, dude? Okay. <laughs> All right. The yeah, illusionist. You should, you should have set that pitch yeah. that one. Too. Well, I was trying to help him out. I'm just lobbing it over the plate for but him. But the, yeah. the, granted, there's not many of many movies like this. It's yeah. kind of a. It's really yeah. a, a niche. And that's why I say it's still it's still a fun movie. That's why it gets points at all. It's also Wait, a I thought your, movie, I thought your favorite magic weird. movie was Magic Mike. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can't wait to get to that one. That's a sleight of hand uh, movie too. <laughs> Different. <laughs> what, of hand. What's in the package? <laughs> Hide the pickle. <laughs> oh, gosh. Gosh. But uh, but yeah. Overall, I just uh, I didn't really like any of the character additions. I didn't like the change in characters. I didn't like... You just how... said you liked Daniel Radcliffe. He's the only one. <laughs> he's but, the and ol- even still, you could... I don't know. He's kind of like a snivelly kind of guy. Like, he's not the best addition you could ever have. It's just like, oh, it's nice to see Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah. And he's not Harry Potter. Yeah. So, like, I, like, I don't want to give too much credit to that, but I like him more than the other additions. Okay. And, uh... I d- yeah, I didn't like Woody Harrelson. Chase. I, I would say 2.0, but he's actually like 0. 0.5. <laughs> uh, mm. Negative one. But <laughs> it's just like, I don't know. I don't know. There are just a lot of things that I thought were like not not a good choice. So 3.5. Fair. All right. Next up is AJ with a 4.5. Yeah. Ooh. Question so mark? So I'm glad I'm following Noah because I agree with a lot of what he said. Um, I'm gonna talk no. positive. I'm gonna talk positive. I like the the increased team building aspect of it, the cohesiveness of the team of the horsemen themselves. I feel like Ruffalo's character took a little bit of a step back. Maybe it's because mm-hmm. he didn't have the sounding board of Alma to bounce off of and to humanize <laughs> him a little bit. We did get the character development of you know a little bit more of the daddy issues, which funnily enough, uh, Merritt calls out in the first movie like early on that he's got daddy issues before. Anyway. Mm-hmm. it's still enjoyable. I still have the entertainment aspect of it. What brings it down, and I was um, thinking about this, was even though I just saw this like yesterday or the other day, and I've seen it before, like it's less memorable as far as the plot points go. And I think that's because this movie, whereas the first one had that balancing act of, you know, it's dumb and superficial, but you know, I'm, I'm willing to be swept along in it. This one reached the tipping point of, you know, it's, over the suspension of disbelief, this one broke that for me, um, and I think it's because uh, okay. I think it's because of those inconsistencies. Like, like Noah mentioned, is you know the motivations of Thaddeus and the whole eye, and everything switches back and forth. You know, in the continuity of the first movie through the second, it it doesn't make sense to me. It's it's nonsensical why they're doing these things if this is their end goal. You're it's counterproductive. I mean, the, yeah. it's just internally inconsistent. Um, that combined mm-hmm. with the fact that, like Noah, I absolutely loathe Chase's character. I thought we got <laughs> enough, we got enough levity with um, Lula. Um, she was a good improvement over. I didn't say Isla Fisher was a, a bad actress or had a bad performance, but you know she wasn't written to have much of a character at all. Right. This one was an improvement, and she fleshed out the team. But it was just. I did like. Uh, I also did like Daniel Radcliffe's performance. It was just really those internal inconsistencies and in the overall story broke that suspension of disbelief, so that it wasn't as smooth, it wasn't as slipstreamed or digestible that the first one was for me to be swept along in that entertainment aspect of it. Mm. Gotcha. That makes right. sense. Next up is Irina with a seven point five again. I right. these movies are hard for me to read because I just I kind of enjoyed them equally so i it was hard to decide to either lower or raise the score Mm -hmm. i will say i personally enjoyed this one a little better just because of its um i i guess kind of making fun of itself in a in some way yeah in the first one it felt like it was trying to make magicians cool and i wasn't vibing with that but at the same time it has a lot of issues with it that I, I I don't really like bringing back 
Arthur as a villain. I just feel like we're we're done with that. That was in the first film. He wasn't even that huge of a villain. He was just rich and took advantage of people. And in this, it would have been nice to just let either Daniel Radcliffe or some other uh, higher up secret society be the villain for this. And this was just another generic, I'm rich and I like to stay rich. Uh, F you, I'm going to throw you in the water. And I, I don't know. I, I think there was more they could do there that they didn't. I really do value being able to see actors interact, though, and their natural chemistry and focusing on the way characters build off of one another. So that's I think that's what allowed me to enjoy this one more than the previous film, where I, I felt like I didn't get enough of that. So that's my 7.5. All I right. think 7.5 is enjoyable enough that I would sit down and watch it, but I'm I'm not really begging for a sequel. I don't really care. Yeah. So. All right. Next is David, and I am also going to sort of echo Irina's sentiments. I was stuck between whether or not it should go above or below the first movie. I also agree that this one I enjoyed slightly more. Um, if I had to pick one to watch again, I would choose the second one. I think that when it came down to the plot movement, this one felt a little bit more cohesive for me. Um, I really liked the interplay with the characters and sort of, and I know there, there are a lot of ups and downs with who the villain is, Thaddeus, and then Arthur, but in the end, I mean, they, they tied it all together and I wasn't looking for something spectacular, I guess. Maybe, maybe I went in with such low expectations that this surprised me, but in the end, well, it, I would watch it again. If you had low again. expectations, why'd you give the first one a seven? I went into both of these with low expectations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I it was I didn't expect much out of them and I actually came out of it thinking, wow, that was an enjoyable experience. I would watch this with somebody again. Uh maybe not very many times, but it's you know, I wasn't upset about my time watching it. And I think if they made a third movie, I maybe I'd go and see it in theaters. I'm not like calling for it, but I would be interested in seeing where they went with it. Mm -hmm. So it has my interest enough. Maybe I just like magic. I don't know. <laughs> I like magic. Well, it, they're they're just entertaining. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I will say, I mean, like, how my enjoyment of this movie is is not reflected by these numbers that I gave them at all. Like, I would watch both yeah, of these yeah. movies again, absolutely. Um, That's the same and, for me. You know, looking at the numbers, that wouldn't really reflect that. But I actually, you know, yeah, I enjoy yeah. the movies overall. Yeah, I totally get that. I, I know what you mean. I enjoy these movies the way I'd enjoy like a like a cheesy TV show. You know, mm -hmm. like you you watch it even though you know it's cringe or there are like bad components of it. You're just mm -hmm. like, oh well, I'm enjoying this for now. Yeah. All right. All right next one. And last but not least, we have Reese with a five point five. Yeah. So I'm in the awkward position of like. I feel like I've been defending this movie mm. the whole time, but I actually didn't love it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I still thought it was pretty mediocre, and I scored the first movie a four. So mm -hmm. this is a, mm -hmm. a big step up, like a big swing up 1. from... 1.5 points up. Yeah. I think this movie does a lot of things to rectify problems that I had with the first film. My problems with the first film were the main four seemed like such hollow characters with literally nothing going on other than oh, they do these cool, flashy shows, yeah. and then they disappear. Uh, I, I had no emotional stake in anything that they were doing. Yeah, what they were doing was cool, and yeah, there's a nice little twist there where Dylan's like the fifth horseman mm -hmm. or whatever. But I didn't... If any one of those characters had dropped off the face of the earth and never returned, I would not have noticed. Yeah. Like, uh, well, in, one of them did. Yeah. <laughs> in, in this newest one, though, I was like... Oh, they they have a dynamic in this one, and each of them does. They're they're starting to have they have kind of distinct personalities. Mm -hmm. And I know y'all didn't like Chase, but I liked that they gave uh, Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson, yeah, thanks for saving me. Uh, Woody Harrelson more to do in this movie because he's like I think he's their wild card, and I know it didn't work out for some of y'all, but mm -hmm. for me it worked. I liked seeing this really obnoxious brother that just he had these pearly white teeth and. 
just this weird fro. Like I was like, who is this guy? Like I, <laughs> I, I liked it. <laughs> I, I wanted to punch him in the nose every time I saw him. And I like so, how conflicted we are about and it, it. And it's it makes it, it's so satisfying when they're you know they're exposed in front of everyone walking out of the plane. I was like. Yes, that guy is guilty. And, <laughs> oh, by the way, but, he says something when he's being captured. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah. he says like I'm a patsy or something when yeah. he when yeah. they. Yeah. That's exactly what Lee Harvey Oswald said when he was being captured. I don't know if that was supposed to be like a connection, yeah. but interesting a little factoid know. for you. Also, they they fixed the villain problem. They added Daniel Radcliffe, who I think you know totally. Well, you know, I mean, added, putting a band aid over something doesn't fix the main it's issue. It's better than no band aid. Fair, yeah, that, that's fair, and that's but why I'm it's a five saying. point five and not yeah. a seven or uh, something. I was, I was just, yeah. It, this movie out. has band aids all over it, and, <laughs> and yes, there's still leaks in the ship, but uh, that duct tape yeah. is holding strong. Yeah. To their credit, I'll, for a director that had to take up the slack from the first one, he did a pretty decent job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, there's less of the CGI trickery on display yeah. in this one. It's there when they're throwing the cards to each other. Yeah, that's CGI. And the water droplet scene, I'm sure that was all CGI mm-hmm. too, even though that can act. But the, the yeah, difference yeah. is a lot of this, I believed, could actually be performed. Yeah. And I was actually more impressed with it in that sense. And Whereas the other one is like, oh, we'll, we'll just make the scene look cool by, you know, adding CGI to it. Yeah, that's one uh, area where I agree. Some uh, yeah. CGI curtains flourishing around. That would look awesome. Yeah, I also mm-hmm. liked the kind of almost globe-trotting nature of the movie you're in Mm -hmm. a different a number of different colorful locations yeah it's got it's got a lot of plot holes but for me i was much more engaged with this one Mm -hmm. than i was the previous one and i was i cringed less yeah it it wasn't trying to be this macho oh we're this this movie look at all these bad boys uh it, it was like oh these guys are they can mess up. They can yeah. screw up. I liked seeing them screw up for once. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, so. Okay. Yeah. We are hey, definitely across the board. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. And yeah. I think movies like this will do that because I I think the biggest problem with this franchise as a whole is just I don't think it knows what it's doing yeah, exactly. I, agree with you there. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's like trying to do several things at once, but it's not really focusing on one or the others significantly enough mm, yeah, for a, anyone in the audience to really rally behind it. They're building the tracks right in front of the moving train Basically. is what it is. Yeah. 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 Lord of the Rings did we that wanna, it was great. Yeah. Do we want to hit up that box office though? Yeah, we're gonna get to that in just oh, a second. Gotcha. Wait, so let me get make sure so David, you gave it a seven or seven point five? Seven. Okay. So we have yeah, a David. Uh, AJ's got to crunch those numbers. This might be very similar because Reese went a little higher. I went a little lower. So Ooh, AJ, AJ went, went a, a lot lower. lower. This will be lower. So first movie we had a group average of five point eight. Now for the second movie we have a group average of five point six. Pretty right. close. Slightly, right. slightly so lower. Let me check yeah. how that stacks up on our total. Um, so yeah, that's going to be right below. The first movie at a 5.8 and Above Soldier at a 4.4. Okay. Okay. It's about the same company. Uh, all right. Hey, not bad. I wish it was above the first movie, but I'll... Eh. It doesn't, oh. I, doesn't really gonna, matter all that much, though, in this I'm, kind of case. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Except when you edit this episode. All right, let's get into the critics so we can hear Noah and AJ be like, I told you so. Uh, oh, so boy. Rotten Tomatoes going to be that way. No, Rotten I know. I know y'all aren't like that. But um Rotten Tomatoes 33% from critics. I told you so. I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You baited him. With an audience score of 53%. IMDb audiences were a little more generous at a 6.5. And on Metacritic this movie got a 46 from critics and a 6.3 from audiences. So this is like slightly lower on almost all fronts. Yeah, slightly lower, but still consistently in that mixed slash mm. mediocre reviews. I guess the biggest difference is Rotten Tomatoes, though. Yeah. So let's uh, move on to the box office here. This movie cost $90 million, so a good $15 million more than the first mm. film. How do y'all think this movie did at the worldwide box office? I'm going to guess the same number that I guessed the first time. 325. 
Three twenty-five. Yep. Dang. All right, this, David. This movie costs the same amount as Lord of the Rings. What? What that, are they no, doing? Inflation, dude. I know, but still, there's like, not a same terrible number. amount of inflation. Like fifteen years worth of right. inflation. Yeah. Uh, anyway, you said ninety million, so I'm gonna go ahead and two fifty. All right, Arena. Two hundred. All right, AJ. Three hundred. Three hundred. Noah, yours was what again? Three twenty-five. All right, Noah, you're the winner of this oh, one. Really? I can't believe oh, that. So yeah, this movie made $335 million Boom. at Man, the worldwide consistent. box office. Yep, it almost made as much as the first one. That's so uh, weird the, to me. The first one has... A, a lot of people like that movie. Okay. I think it's uh, it's goodwill from the first one that's carried over. The, this, right. this franchise seems to be kind of critic-proof. Maybe, mm. maybe that's why this second one didn't really get that great ra- ratings because they well, liked the it's first just one. dumb fun like you know how like i i love fast and furious mm. as a guilty pleasure mm. but it's like that yeah. same kind of vibe where it's just it's dumb fun i guess oh, no, if Reese's I... eyes twitching <laughs> <laughs> i love fast and furious i guess from listening to that from the audience scores and everything like i i didn't have the experience of going to see this in theaters or anything i only just watched these two movies so I don't quite understand, but I guess I could see why the second one would be a disappointment because mm. the first opens up that idea of the eye. Oh, what's the eye? I'm kind of curious what this mystery is. And then in the second one, they just avoid talking about it at all, essentially, just that it's there, you know? So I yeah. I, I guess I could see how that would be a disappointment to people. Mm. Yeah. The mystery's gone. But yeah, the movie was still a big success. The one difference, though, was overseas, it did a lot better than the first one did. But here, domestically, it actually lost almost half of its box office. Like, wow. Yeah, which is a crazy, crazy drop. I wonder if the overseas was better because a lot of it was filmed in China. Uh, Could be. I don't know. China. I mean, I think they did film on location, so it makes sense. I, I actually don't think that's any factor. The, I don't think the location is a thing. It could be mm. just the release window it opened in, what it, what came out against it that weekend, which I should have looked up. But this movie just didn't perform as well as what the year first was film. It? Uh, 2016. 2016. A lot of things. Yeah. So, this movie has franchise prospects in its future still. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say this is not a dead franchise. I would say it's kind of floundering, though. Yeah. Dormant. Uh, not even dormant. I think it's active. Yeah. Uh, but It's like Yellowstone. Yeah, active. Who knows when it's going to blow? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And kill us all. Now you see me three. <laughs> now you see me three. The Sword of Pompeii movie. Mm, good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, they're... they're they are actively in production on a third film right now. It's kind of been a bit slower going, but I think they're starting to actually get the ball rolling on that one. There were rumors that Benedict Cumberbatch was signed on to star, but I actually checked that, and he is not. Uh, but he saw the movie, he's like, he's okay, like, yeah, maybe not. Near that. <laughs> but, but, a, but a lot of the cast is expected to, to return for this sequel. That said, yeah. there's really no time frame as to when it's going to come out or mm-hmm. what's even going on with it. This is one of those franchises that is just, you know, seeing what happens and based off the success, they'll keep making another one. I don't think there's any grand plan for the story other than the whoever uh, Dylan's father is, who's yeah. likely the eye. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, we're all going to watch it and we're going to be like, oh, okay. Oh, darn. Yeah. I never would have seen that coming. I, I would say this is... Oh yeah. gosh, that would be weird too. Mm-hmm. I, would I would say Chase. Cool. I am your father. I'd say this is a dangerous franchise to get too invested in, though, because it's one that they could pull the cord on at any second. Yeah. Like they, if the if the third movie were to crater box office wise, or at least be disappointing compared to one and two, I don't think it's likely you would get a fourth based mm-hmm. off of that. Whereas other franchises have more staying power and more clout built up yeah. over time. I just want them to do a show instead. Yeah. To be honest. Eh. Like like leverage, you know? I, there are too many shows, though. I can't keep track yeah. of all of them. Oh, me either, but like... Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I'd watch a third one of this if they, you know, kept the cast, found a, another interesting director, 
and took it in a new direction instead of kind of ending on the same note as like, oh, you know, now in the next movie you're gonna learn what the eye is. Like they just keep passing oh, the baton. Gosh. Like I would hate like like I wanna know what the eye is, just let me into that world. Do the John Wick thing where in John Wick two you really start to get enveloped and yeah. learn more about this mm-hmm. underground society of assassins. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to know what the eye is. I want to know what this society yeah. of magicians is. Like, that's where you take this franchise. You Just John Wick it. John uh, Wick did it right. Yeah. yeah. I think it's too late for them to John Wick it. But no, if it, it, I'd give them a third chance just to see, like, do, do something ambitious. They could do better. Yeah. John Wick yeah. it. What are we playing? Cricket? <laughs> oh. Yeah. But uh, as of right now, I think it's safe to say that this franchise is not dead. I think it's the first one that actually, no, you know, 28 days and weeks later, there's a third one for that one that's reportedly in development right now. But yeah, I, I'd say it, it's a safe bet that this is getting a third movie. Mm. I, we just don't quite know when. No. Uh, and is anyone going to care at that point? I feel like you. It, it, it was 2016. We're four yeah. years later already. We don't know when the next one's coming out. Who's I, I don't see any rabid Now You See Me fans out there. I'm going to be the first one in the theater. <laughs> All right. Well, good. <laughs> I'm the rabid fan. You're going to buy out the entire theater. You're going to start a... working at the theater again? <laughs> Just you'll, for you'll this, have, yes. You'll have a, a five-minute little magician act before the thing. <laughs> and I'm gonna no, have... it's, like, it's like the movie comes out, and there's like, what, like, 200 tickets sold overall. And it's just... Just me. Just and he was David the first one to see Tim of the Dragon Emperor, so... Yeah, it's true. <laughs> there it is. Gosh, yeah. No uh, one expects so I, the third one to be. Let's take good. it. Let's take it to vote. Um, what are we voting on? Whether honorable or not this uh, it's honorable or a dishonorable death. Uh, I would say dishonorable. Uh, it opens up more questions than it closes. Yeah, I agree. I'm gonna I would say agree dishonorable. With dishonorable. I like it, but it doesn't. Because it is, it is leading probably. you to believe there is another one in the works, but it. I, I would say dishonorable. They didn't like only complicating factor of giving it a dishonorable is because I, I do think the third is confirmed. But yeah, if the franchise were to end at two, I would say dishonorable as well. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, because yeah, there, there's, there's still mysteries that are yet to be uncovered yeah, in this story. <laughs> there's yep. too much left to find out that yeah couldn't yeah. be. Indeed. All right, that closes out our series on now you see me. Covered Now You See Me and Now You See Me 2. So yeah, you can find our podcasts on all streaming platforms. We have an Instagram page, Manned by David, and a Spotify account, I mean a Spotify page, or a Spotify playlist, excuse me, uh, with all the music from the various scores of the films we've covered. Uh, If you like our podcast, please like, rate, subscribe. Other than that... Uh, And uh, be sure to check out Reese's OnlyFans. Mm, thank you. Thank you. What? <laughs> anyway. Never mind. That's our episode. Next week, we are going to delve further into heist territory. This time, it's a bigger franchise. We're talking Ocean's Eleven. Mm. And uh, yeah, that's going to be a four film uh, franchise here. So strap yeah, in. We're, we're going all in on heists. I'm going to tell you right now, I have never seen an Ocean's Eleven. Film. I've only seen parts mm. of the first one. No, yeah, that's the same okay. for me. So mm-hmm. and I know it's a classic. I saw but... the first 20 minutes. That's it. That's uh, uh, such a blind spot for a lot of us. How yeah. about you, AJ? Yeah, I've seen, I saw the original one and I've seen the, the new one. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. All right. I mean, we'll go into that again in our episode, but yeah. still, that this is a this is new territory for a lot mm-hmm. of us. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of haters though who are like, "Y'all haven't seen Ocean's Eleven? Oh what's cool. wrong with you?" It's uh, it's one of those scenarios where you see it there and you're like, "I know I should watch this, but I'm just not in the mood right I, now." I feel I, the same about the Bourne movies. Yeah, Dude, I get the Me same too. backlash yeah. when I say I haven't seen Forrest Gump. Mm. Yeah, you still haven't. I still have. Um, I I kind of want to give you that backlash. Right I know. Now, we'll I, am, I was waiting. I was waiting for you to like do it right now. I'm I'm trying to be better at not lashing out. You know, a life is like a box of chocolates. Chocolates. Maybe we don't include that in the cut. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. That concludes our episode. Goodbye, guys. Bye. Bye. Expecto Patronum.